Did I say hi? Or did I say hi? <laughs> okay. Hey. Yeah. My name is Brian Mosire. I'm the, the founder and CEO of Ujuzi Kilimo. My name is uh, Peter Njonjo. I'm CEO and co-founder of Twiggy Foods. I'm Nicole Rogers, founder and CEO of Africa's first flavor house. Yeah. Uh, I'm Karida Chinjolo. I'm the CEO and one of the co-founders of Kula. But I did it all my way. Oh wow. Told you when you came my way. Can nobody take you? When it comes to Africa is that uh, Africa has 60% of the available arable land globally. So when we talk about the future of food and the future of agriculture, then Africa has to become the center of this conversation. When it comes to technology adoption, we also understand that uh, uh, unlike developed countries, uh, Africa is the place of opportunity when it comes to uptake of the technologies that we're seeing and developing at the moment. So I believe that uh, Africa as a continent has the manpower, has the youngest population, has the talent and has the land. Uh, to produce food for the future. So that is how I see Africa acting in the agri-tech space. Uh, the amount of food and beverage consumed in the informal retail across the African continent is worth $700 billion. So that's a huge sum, right? And if 50% of Africa's uh, disposable income is going to food, it means that that's where bulk of expenditure is, and that's where bulk of the opportunity is. So the way we're looking at it is that we're simply fishing where the fish are. I think everyone knows that we have finite resources, and I think there is now, there used to be really segregated thought leadership that was kind of raising alarm bells saying, hey, the broccoli is not nutritious anymore. Hey, the um, animal, uh, animal farming is bad for climate. And all these alarm bells now, I think have been proved true. And so there's an urgency, like a global urgency, I would say. You only get the uptake when you're addressing pain points. If you're not addressing a real issue that a farmer is facing, you're not gonna get that uptake. You're not gonna get consistent um, you know, usage on your platform. When you're on the African continent, sometimes the narrative around us is not very wholesome. If you look at our newspapers on a daily basis, there's always things around corruption, of uh, poor governance. And uh, what we've had to do is to operate at a level that is much, much higher than uh, what we have in our local markets to ensure that our level of governance was world class. So it doesn't make any difference between ourselves and maybe a startup that's sitting in New York. And the reason why that was important was to give the investors that level of comfort that uh, they could actually invest in us and uh, <clears throat> we'd be able to steward their resources and generate a return. These are the farmers that are disproportionately affected by climate change because at the moment, Africa in, uh, agriculture in Africa is actually rain-fed. So I see that the fact that we're talking about uh, climate crisis, changing weather patterns, um, uh, rain-fed agriculture, smallholder farmers, and producing food, all these components are actually intertwined, and Africa is actually that place that presents all these uh, three aspects combined to the globe. So it, there's a lot to be learned. You know how some of the um, you know shared network startups have worked in the U.S. and how quickly they've grown. Um, some of that doesn't work here on the continent. You need to have a little bit of a human touch element, a little bit of a adaptability. You know, modifying your product to get closer to where um, you know your users are. And it means you have to admit that you're not the smartest guy in the room. So you have to let the users you know, help you build the product. We've seen anyway is just the support of that complete um, and utter commitment to the creative process of innovation is what an ag tech or an Africa and an ag tech investor is looking for. So if you have ideas, and we're, we're seeing this now because we're, we're getting in Kenya this little like accelerator dynamic where other entrepreneurs are coming to us and saying like, how do you talk to, how do you get investors interested? And it's, it's really um, being focused on the problem you're solving and it's not solving a problem for Africa. We're solving a problem for the world. It's super important, it, like it changes everything. What a time of my life.